In this video, we will use Kruskal's algorithm to find minimum spanning trees for a graph. So a typical problem will look like this. You're given a graph, and you're asked to use Kruskal's algorithm to find the minimum spanning tree. Let's remember how Kruskal's algorithm works. First, we start with none of the edges being a part of the solution. As you'll see in a moment, we just start with an empty graph with just the vertices, none of the edges. Then we're going to add the edges one at a time, starting with the cheapest edge, but we won't add an edge if that would create a circuit. Remember that part of a minimum spanning tree is the tree, which just means a graph that has no circuits. And we're going to keep adding edges until every vertex is connected to one single network. That's the spanning part. And the minimum is going to tell us that since we're using the cheapest edges, we're actually going to be guaranteed to get them the lowest possible total cost for a spanning tree of this graph. So let's see how this will work. We're going to start with an empty graph. We're going to get rid of all of the edges. And what I would recommend if you're doing this on a piece of paper is just draw those dots separately next to the problem that you're working on. And now we're going to look at our graph and try to find the cheapest edge. So if you take a look at this graph for a moment and look for the edge that has the lowest cost of all those edges, it shouldn't take you too long to see that it's the edge that connects B to C. So we're going to add that as the first edge of our minimum spanning tree. So on the left-hand graph, which is our original problem, we're just going to put check marks next to the edges that we use. And we're going to cross out any edge that we consider but then decide not to use. On the right graph, we're just drawing the edges, and so the right graph will eventually show us our minimum spanning tree. So now we're looking again at the left and trying to find out what's the next cheapest edge. Well, again, thinking for a moment, we can find that it's the edge from A to H, costing 1.8. Adding that edge to our graph on the right will not create a circuit, so we're going to put a check mark and continue on our way. The next cheapest edge is the edge from A to E, costing 2.0. Again, adding that edge would not create a circuit, so we continue. The next edge that's cheapest is E to H. But if you look at that on the right, if we connected E to H, that would actually create a circuit that includes A, E, and H. And we don't want any circuits in our graph, so we're going to cross out that edge from E to H and continue on. The next cheapest edge is the edge from A to B. No circuits there, so check that edge off and keep going. The next cheapest edge is the edge from F to G, costing 2.4. Now at this point, a common mistake would be to stop, because if you look at the graph on the right, it seems that every vertex is connected to at least one other vertex, so that looks like it's our minimum spanning tree. But the problem is that it's not one connected network. We've got sort of two pieces there, and we want to connect those together into one big piece. So we're going to keep going. We're not finished. The next cheapest edge is the edge from C to H, but if we drew that edge on our graph on the right, that would create a circuit with four vertices, A, B, C, and H, and we don't want any circuits at all. So we're going to cross out that edge from C to H. The next cheapest edge is the edge from E to F, costing 2.8. And now when we look on the right-hand graph, we can see that we really do have a spanning tree. We've got every vertex connected to every other vertex along the network. And so we're done. Notice that on the graph on the left, we did not consider every edge. There are more expensive edges that we didn't get around to, to thinking about because we got our minimum spanning tree before we got up to those more expensive edges. So we don't cross them out, we don't put check marks next to them, we just never got to consider them so we leave them blank. So this is our final solution.